question to you is is on facilitation and designers okay. and dealing with forbidden topics. Okay. Uh, because you know when we normally have design uh, teams that come to us, they have these uh, you know truly uh, complex, challenging, amazing topics. Uh, but they're off, often orbiting something that's really controversial or the organization doesn't want to talk about. Right. I'll give you two quick examples. Uh, in SOCOM, one of the things that's generally like, you're not, it's, it's not an open discussion, but it's a serious issue, are, are operator suicides. Okay. Uh, another uh, a topic out there has to do with gender. And uh, uh, I know that a, uh, the, the, the former MARSOC uh, G3 was doing design with a team uh, on a MARSOC 2030 um, design kind of future concept and it ran into the same issue where he, he had you know an all male commando group mm -hmm. and they were all talking about all the great stuff that they were going to have in 2030 you know the, the armor and the suits and all the technology and he, he sh challenges them disrupts them and says what if Marsak's contribution to SOCOM in 2030 is being the leading wor the world leaders the edge uh, with all female commandos all female commando teams and he said that the, the guys around the table just looked at him, they're all their jaws dropped. And because they were, it was so far removed from what they would even, and then they immediately put up all the barriers. Well, we don't know if that would provide us any advantage. And if we were to do that, we don't have the recruiting, we don't have the timeline, it would change our pipeline, we have to change our equipping, we have to change all these things. And it was just like, no, 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 on these, once again, another forbidden topic, gender and special operations. So. Uh, from suicides to gender to all the other things that we're not supposed to talk about, but they really do go into those design issues. What are your recommendations as a design facilitator? How do you stimulate that? Remember, we're not design facilitators, we're cognitive operators. Cognitive uh, operators. With, no, which has, yeah. which has to do with it. Why? Yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, and, and then I'll give you, it will be partial also with gender uh, answer. When I'm in the room, it is much easier for me because still most of our general officers are, or their equivalents in the other security services are still male. Mm. I mean, uh, it's really hard. They're trying to bring one woman every year. First year, it, it was a general. Of course, she came, didn't come from the field. She came from human resources or something. And last two years, we have uh, females from the foreign ministry. Okay. okay. So they're females, very successful in their field but they're not really intimidating anyone in the room and they're not competing with them for jobs, okay? So they're accepted. If they're accepted, you can work with them. They're not uh, threatening anyone. Um, forbidden topics for me relating to degrees of freedom as well is basically the alter ego <laughs> that you don't want to address. So what I do with it again, I, I turn it into something operational. Instead of saying forbidden, I'm saying, okay, Let's talk about everything. It's like the Donald Rumsfeld known unknowns. Let's talk about the knowns, and then let's talk about the known unknowns. Let's do it again, the Janus space, the mirror image. Why? Because this is how we learn. So let's talk about the forbidden so we can talk about what we have. And once you start talking about, again, I wouldn't say forbidden. I just say, I would say the undercurrents. Again, I will use other words, okay? I'll, I'll talk about the unknowns. I'll talk about... And so that's one way. I, I, I make it into something operational so that you're, you're supposed to talk about because that's the way to talk about the next phase. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know it's not the end state in itself. I'm not talking about for, the forbidden for itself. I'm talking about forbidden as a phase in my inquiry. Um, so do you try to force a little bit more abstraction if, especially if they start running to maybe their favorite tactical tools? No, I just ask them really to do something very simple. I mean, just mm -hmm. give me a line or a line like this maybe because, you know, the, <laughs> what, you, the, what you're aware of or what you're not aware of, right? What's mm -hmm. like the known and the unknown. So give me a line and above the line, tell me everything that you know, everything that's like the me too, whatever, okay? Mm -hmm. All the PC and then give me all the not PC. Okay. And see, and then you create this space. So if you have both of them at the same time, people will talk about it. I think if you only ask them to talk about what you call forbidden, mm -hmm. then they will not talk about it. In Israel, we also have sensitivities. For example, subversive. For us, subversive is something which is critical, sub subversive thinking. But politically, in Israel, the connotation is very bad. Why? Because it goes back to the communist era and... To be politically subversive was anti-party political party. So to say to someone that you need to see, to think subversively doesn't go well in Israel. Okay, so we need to use other words. So you say okay, what what you cannot see. 
But just put the two, I'm, I'm just putting the two of them, I'm asking them to put the two of them together. Mm -hmm. It's like the mirror, the Janice face, and then they feel more comfortable talking about it. But it must be, it's not like, the forbidden is like, like the forbidden fruit is, is the forbid, it's basically the forbidden is the forbidden fruit. That's where it becomes interesting. Mm -hmm. if, they're, if, they're, if they're not willing to talk about it, I know that there's not gonna be an inquiry. Again, another measure of success, you know? If you don't show me that, don't bother going anywhere else because, so that's one thing. The other thing is that, you know, that the, the Chatham House rules. Right. Our generals, again, were privileged. So our generals usually know each other. Even the people who are not in the military, they kind of know each other. And if they know, don't know each other directly, they know it by second degree of separation, not more than that. I can get to the prime minister in two degrees of separation, me, okay? So they know each other. Um, and if you don't have the intimacy in the room to talk about things, nothing interesting is going to happen. So I don't know how we do it again in, in other classes, but here it's kind of a, that's how we, we started off. I mean, socially we get along and we started talking about these things and people be, begin to feel more comfortable and then it just... So kind of tearing down comes. a little bit of the structure. But, but the thing is to make it into something operational. Mm -hmm. Not talking about... because. Uh, there are talks also here, like um, you mentioned females. Why do we need females in combat positions? It just makes my life harder, okay? It's just, you know, I need to, to give them parallel, you know, uh, you know, housing and stuff. I need to, to address the religious soldiers, okay? So they rant about it over coffee, okay? But if I think it's a, you know, it's a valuable thing to talk about, it's part of the inquiry, they need to bring it in the room and they need to talk about it operationally. What, what is operationally impeding them when they have female combat? And what is the gain? Another example. And then you always, once you talk about both things at the same, simultaneously, I think you'll have a conversation. Because it was the same with bringing uh, female, females into a, like drone launching. Okay, mm -hmm. so they couldn't, um, they couldn't operate the, the existing drones because it was too heavy for them to, to launch. So, but there was this experiment of bringing women into the drone uh, units. So they made a drone that was a lot easier to launch. And now, you know, the male population is divided into two. One says, oh great, now it's not gonna be so hard for me to launch the drone as well. And the other one said, you see, they're not strong enough to be, you know, common right. soldiers. So that's like, you know, so it, First of all, it's not gonna always work, right? The forbidden stuff, I mean, people who are close-minded, it's not gonna help you, I mean. But just making something, oper I mean, that's what I've done. So highlighting it, like more of the tensions, you know, those, the, the, the things that might be a paradox. Tensions is part, I mean, tensions, again, is, is, is a condition for talking uh, about design. Mm -hmm. So as long as you remember that in the tensions, we'll always put one side that it's easier for us to, <laughs> Right, one we feel more comfortable, and the other side would always be the dark side. Right? We talked about the dark side, so without tension, they're not going to be inquiry. Right, without the undercurrents, you know what what you're not allowed to talk about. That's it's kind of we 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 turn around the the, the rules of the game. So here finally is a place where you can talk about the forbidden thing. Okay, just absolutely turn the rules of the game. And in one of our classes a couple of years ago. At the end of the year, they wrote uh, papers. Each of them wrote a paper, like a monograph, on whatever. They could write about design, they can talk about generalship, they can write about the content that they develop. It was so sensitive, talking to me about forbidden, like, it was so sensitive what they said about the organization, what they said about their commanders, what they said about themselves, that we didn't circulate it. <laughs> we read it, and we're like, mm hmm. Okay, and we gave it to them, you know, for like personal copies, and mm -hmm. that, was, that was the level of intimacy and forbidden fruit that we, we went through. But otherwise, don't bother, don't bother to resign. If you're not willing to talk about it, don't start. Don't, start. don't open the box. Don't, don't open the box. If you want to think outside of the box, you might be scared <laughs> of what's outside of the box. That's true. So just last few minutes, uh, if we could just talk about uh, another concept, but it's, it's one that, it's, it's a great metaphor, and I think it really ties back into this whole willingness um, you know, earlier we talked to Shimon about being trapped in the tactical maze and everyone's just right. trying to run through the maze. But when you get above that and realize that it's, it's, a, it's a cognitive maze at an operational level, right. now there's this notion of drift, mm -hmm. of the designer being willing to, to shift around. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Yes. Um, 
the last once we started again once we moved to the states where we had to uh, make our journey into the realm of strategy because before that you know, in Israel we didn't bother talking about strategy because we didn't need it we're not an empire we're not running the world uh, and also we with you know the last gain that we tried to do strategically was 67 so we didn't do strategy once we moved we started talking about strategy and what we found in strategy that once you start looking at the world your frame of reference whatever you have in your head again it doesn't matter if it's doctrine or your politics or your cultural biases okay all this either helps you in understanding the reality that you see the emergence or prevents you from seeing it now usually again 99 of us we just we just go with the flow much happier people um, but those of us who are curious or those of us who are skeptic or those of us who are again heretic is like taking it again to all the way um, start to see that they don't you know these these frames are not explaining anymore and my kids I mean my youngest is 10 years old I think at least third of the families in his class are not you know this doctrine families a father a mother and siblings you know mm -hmm. they have single parents they have same-sex uh, parents they have all kinds so when they say family they don't perceive family as i perceive family they don't care but if i have this frame that explains the world to me and suddenly it doesn't make sense i will lose my ability to again cog cognitive cognitively find myself in the world so because we talked about the Pantare, you know, the river is flowing, and because we talked about the cosmology of how reality is changing in such complex ways, we chose the notion of drift to keep with this metaphor of navigation and recompassing yourself in the world. Again, space of deliberations, navigation that also goes to why we need one strategy and one operation. Navig for, just for navigation. So what we do again, so how, how we go about talking about the drifts, because people think that in order to understand the drift, you just need to see what has changed. So that's just like one very, the, the layer of description of starting to understand the drift. If you want to understand the drift, you have to put your cognitive mapping first on the table, the existing one, whether it's doctrine, again, whether it's directives, whether it's your cultural biases, whether it's the books that you read. You know, we, we used to have, I think, a lot more common grounds uh, culturally um, when we were talking about metaphors. I mean, we thought we were talking about the same things. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. I mean, I think you put 10 people in the room, even if they're from the same country, from the same organization, they're not going to use the same analogies and metaphors. They're not going to think about the same things when you use certain words. Unless so, they cling the doctrine, of course. <laughs> <laughs> to be doctrinally correct. No, I mean, I mean, even, you know, beyond, to just to explain reality in all its levels and phases. So, start with that, and then look at what has changed in reality, and tell me, do you understand what's going on? If not, yes, you'll have to create, the drift would be to see that, I mean, basically what we're looking at, the same drift is to see how it shifted away from where I thought I would, I would be, and the world would be. It could yeah. be external and internal. And then to get away from it again, to, because again, the mirror image of the drift is potential. It's, That's how we play with it. So remember, we do that, we do the forbidden, we do the dark in order to get, to understand how to navigate back. It's a great metaphor because uh, even if you look at history and, uh, and explorations and what happened with drift, the tactical level, once again, that reverse engineered ends ways means uh, I have my plan, my objective, I've got my navigation, I know where I need to go. And then this drift doesn't work there because drift brings you to an immersion, a right. different destination. So if you're trying to get to one colony, but your organization ends up in an entirely new area, but you've now discovered an entire new opportunity, new uh, resources, a new land, new whatever, if you stick to that old, original, outdated, inefficient plan, you failed. And, and so the drift actually is it's much more of a design concept, but it actually doesn't really, it doesn't really have much value 
Um, you can only evaluate your planning in, in terms of success or failure based upon the limited views that you had before you took off. Right. That's why we relate drift also to, again, to degrees of freedom yeah. and to whether there is a potential in this design inquiry to come up with an alternative reality. Because we had, I sat with Americans uh, some time ago, we talked about the Northern Arena. At some point they were trying to understand again the Syria and Iran and Turkey and the Kurds and Israel and the president, your president, and what's going on. And at some point he said, well, all these ultra jihadists are lifting their heads in places where we gave them the freedom to do that for so many years. I mean, we created the conditions for them to be successful and now they're gaining it back on us. So for him, the drift was that the fact that we're surprised that this is happening. I mean, it was just, you know, if you, you know, you, they bake the cake, you know, with the ingredient that you gave them. So why am I going to operate differently in the world? And then the problem is that the potential is to start operating like other players in the region that you're not necessarily, again, culturally, politically, socially identified with. So again, this is an operational concept, starting from some uh, philosophic ideas, but in the inquiry, it becomes operational. If you don't have this frame of the drift, then you'll be drifting along. You'll be, you'll be fixing it on end states, and the end right. states are never going to match up with, with those emergent pop right. opportunities. Yeah, definitely exactly. end state would be another point of departure to deconstruct. Well, on that note, we've hit our end state. <laughs> So, uh, but, but on behalf of JSAO and uh, our, our president, our director, our design faculty, as well as uh, our SOCOM enterprise and all of our, our students that are gonna get you know, access to all this material, mm -hmm. we really, really, really appreciate you and Shimon's time. Oh, of and, course. Uh, I'll bring more whiskey next time. Next so, time. Two bottles. So, <laughs> thanks. Sure. <laughs>